I'm Anissa Zankovic. I'm professor at Virginia Tech. I'm going to talk about my research on work and family life. I think I'll start by saying that I wouldn't have had much of an entry into this type of inquiry without the work of some prominent longtime NCFR members. First, I think I was inspired by Nan Crowder, who was one of my mentors when I was in graduate school. I took the first class she ever taught at the graduate level on work and personal life. And then I've been inspired since by her work, particularly her review with Maureen Perry Jenkins and Rena Rapetti, that I think was published in the Decade Review in 2000 on work and personal life. One of the things that they talked about there was setting forth a agenda for some unanswered questions, particularly the idea that all work isn't the same, so you can't expect to have a study of people in all kinds of different occupations, all kinds of working conditions, and have those different work situations affect their family life in the same way. I thought that was really smart, and I decided that I would focus on particular occupations, particularly with very intense or different kinds of demands that they make on workers and look at those occupations and those unusual demands and how they were connected to personal life. So one of my first studies in this vein was about commercial fishing families on the Oregon coast. Primarily I worked with fishing wives groups that were organized groups of women who got together for social life and for advocacy and to help each other out and social support in the event that there were problems or stresses that came up either for their children or related to their husbands, the fishermen. One of the first things I discovered was that these women were very involved in the fishery. Typically they were unpaid, they were off the books, they were unrecognized for the work that they did, but they did things that ranged from working on the boat, buying food before trips, bailing crew out of jail. They did a lot of things, um, keeping the finances of the operation. They did many, many things that helped the fishing industry and the husband's company. So then from there, I did a study of women who traveled for work. And their situations related to their work travel were very different than the commercial fishing type of situation. So I thought, this was a good avenue to look at how gendered family work is and also how gendered work is, paid work in the labor force. So the study that I'm just completing now looks at both men and women in the same occupations whose jobs require them to travel. It looks at the workers, their spouses, and for about half of the sample, their children as well. So we interviewed children over the age of eight, and couples. Everyone had to be in a partner relationship to be in our study because we're interested in the person who travels and their partner who's left at home. We did a multi-method study where we went to their homes, we interviewed them qualitatively, we gave them standardized measures, and then we left them with a personal digital assistant, a PDA, on which was a daily diary and so every evening they recorded their daily activities and mood, some health related measures at the daily level and then we have about a month's worth of data of all family members which encompasses two different trip cycles. So being away, coming back home and how all of that plays out. I guess I should talk about some things that we're finding. Uh, first of all, I thought that the travel demand, how often people traveled, how long the trips were, those kinds of aspects of the work demand would make a difference for how the families are doing. By and large though, turns out that the objective aspects of travel didn't really differentiate who was having difficulty coping, who was having problems with their family relationships or with their children and their children's well-being. To some extent, the more often people come home and then go away, the in and out of trips seems to make somewhat of a difference. That, um, the more trips, the more stressful things are. So I guess there's an implication there for workers and for employers is that even piggybacking one trip on another might be a better way to go than putting people through the repeated stress of coming and going so frequently. 
right now I'm working on a paper related to parenting and how that plays out when a parent has to travel. One of the things that I'm finding in this qualitative grounded theory method paper is that the stories that children tell are really interesting, very compelling, and really haven't been told very much in the parenting literature in general. So children have a lot of interesting things to say about their family life, and in this situation they can talk about how their family life is different when a parent is away due to work versus the parent is home. Things from uh, the daily and the mundane about how they're worried about safety or how they're careful to lock doors and keep their curtains closed when a parent is gone due to work, um, to the quality of their evening meals when a parent is away due to work. Um, so I'm having a really good time looking at a family level and kind of juxtaposing what the parents may say about travel with what the children may say about travel. I'm also looking a little bit at emotional connections between parents and I find that the children talk about this in ways that the parents really don't. It's not to say that the parents are unaware of their children's emotional connection to them, but children will really talk about that. They'll talk about missing their parent, both a father who travels for work or another child might talk about missing their mother, um, with really vivid stories about what life is like when that parent is gone and yet the parent when asked by a different interviewer you know, at the same period in time in a different part of their house will say oh they have no problems it's really smooth and straightforward so it's interesting to get those different perspectives and it tells me that getting the voices of children is a really important thing to do um, my hope with this project was to be able to combine both the qualitative data and the daily diary information to see how family life really does change when people are gone or when they're away, and we're just now beginning to explore that. I think my work has implications for family life education because when families know more about the strains that are common related to this job condition, then they can better prepare for it. We've done newsletters for the families who participate in our project, both as a vehicle to let them know that their information is being used, and also as a way to tell them about some hints and information that comes from other parents that can be helpful to them. So that's one way that we're getting the information back out. But I also think that these broader issues of how children talk about their emotions, how children talk about their parents being stressed, uh, really has impact or import beyond work travel for all kinds of stressful job conditions. So I feel that my next project will be more about a variety of stressful job conditions, overtime, night work, how these different conditions have similar but in some ways different um, pressures for family life.